today's video is about how to make a small wildlife pond or a mini wildlife pond. So what we've got here is we've got an old pond that's been in situ for a long time and the clients moved the surrounding cobbles away so we can reincorporate those with the new pond but basically the first job is to take this old pond away and then have a look at the hole, see if we need to do any groundwork. The, the new pond going in is the same sort of size, so it's six foot long by four foot wide by about 18 inches deep, and that's perfectly adequate for wildlife in the UK. Now obviously some um, aquatic wildlife want different requirements, so what we'll do in this video is we'll talk about those requirements and also will be making the pond in front of your airy eyes. So stay tuned for the Any Pond Mini Wildlife Pond Showcase. So now we've got the old pond out and we've got it out the front into the van. So now is the next stage of basically doing the groundwork. As you can see, um, the old pond had to go in precisely because it was a preformed pond. It wasn't um, specifically for wildlife, it was too deep. It was more of a fish pond, the preformed fish pond than a wildlife pond. So we've got to do a little bit of groundwork and we've got to tidy up some edges and as you can see, we work very, very tidily. It's almost like, um, you know, in stages. So the first thing is get rid of the old pond, which is what we've done. Now I'm gonna basically spray out the, the new pond. And also we've got water filling up in the blue vat behind me, just basically so we're not having to wait for the new water to go in. So we'll condition it all in that blue vat. And then once we're ready for water, we can pump that out of there into the new pond. So the next stage is the groundwork. So right now you're in the hole, now you can see much better. So what we've got here is we've got a pebble covered liner. And the reason why I'm putting it in this pond is because basically we want to maximize the water volume and also it gives a texture to the surface. So the amphibians, newts, frogs, um, dragonfly larvae, damselfly larvae has something to basically walk her up. So if it was a smooth liner, they've got nothing to purchase on we're gonna basically build rocks and gravel on top of this. And if it was, let's say up here, there's no way I could fix it against the soil and um, it would look odd. So having the rocks and gravel, it would look perfect because obviously the plants and soil and everything can go there. 
but on a small pond like this we want to maximise the size and the volume of water so we're using this rather than filling the hole full of boulders and cobbles. So using the, pep, the, the textured liner it's a good thing from a water volume point of view. So as you can see we've just rinsed down the rocks and placed um, the pump and what we've done here there is we've put the pump in a pot of gravel inside another pot so if you ever want to clean this particular um, pump you can literally just take out the pot out of the other pot and it won't or the, the rocks and the gravel won't fall back into the hole so you're having to sort of like rebuild it every time so we use a double pot method and the reason why we use the double pot method in a wildlife pond is it's basically creating a much bigger area where the water is sucked from. So if you imagine if you had a hoover sucking water, there's no way any wildlife could get away from that if they swam across the front. It would go straight up into the pump and the mechanisation. And it would absolutely hate that, obviously. So what we do is we put the pump inside a box of or a tub of gravel creating an intake bay and it basically makes it the whole thing not so violent so a newt could walk across the gravel that the water's being sucked through or Daphne can swim by it because there's no real aggressive part and also it prolongs the life or the maintenance of the particular pump. So what we're doing now is we're basically going to pump out all of this horrible um, dirty water and then we're going to fill the pond with a mixture of rainwater and tap water because it's a wildlife pond. The reason why we're using um, rainwater is because it's low in nutrients, it's got a very low pH, there's no nasties. Obviously um, tap water is designed for humans to drink rather than you know a wildlife pond. If it was 100% rainwater it would be a very low pH and also there's nothing really in there. There's no calcium, there's no nothing, it's literally um, just rain out of the sky. So stay tuned, now we're going to pump out all the disgusting water.